today the breakpoint built-in function in Python 3. So let's start with a look at the docs. Um, breakpoint is a new built-in function having been introduced in version 3.7 and I think that makes breakpoint the newest built-in function. If you didn't know, breakpoint is related to the debugger and it's basically a function that you want to call when you want to break a program and open up the debugger in the middle of your program. I'll be showing you what that looks like in this video, but let's run through this line by line a little bit because it'll, it'll inform things. So by default, we're basically calling pdb.setTrace. And what breakpoint is, is it's considered a convenience function so that we don't have to call pdb.setTrace, basically. The other benefit here is that we can drop in the debugger of our choice because there's other ones other than pdb out there, and I'll recommend a few in this video. Here in this Python debugger article, I'm just going to scroll down and get the syntax that I'm going to need. And what it says is this is the typical usage to break into the debugger from a running program. So we'll copy this and we'll flip over to VS Code. So you can see I've created a simple for loop here, and that's going to run 0 to 9 and just print that out in our terminal. But what if I wanted to, let's say, debug when we hit 5? So we could do if i equals 5, um, and then paste in our code for the debugger. And we can run this again. And now we've entered pdb. Here we could type i to see what i is right now. And you can see that we have 5. Now let's introduce the breakpoint function and use that to replace the line above it. So we'll comment that out. We'll save breakpoint. And we'll quit out of PDB, uh, refresh this, run it again, and look, we're back in PDB, and i equals 5 again. And it's the exact same thing as before, except our syntax is much shorter, and we didn't have to import a module. So that right there, folks, is most of the benefits they were trying to derive with this built-in function how much cleaner this is than having to import something and then call methods from it. And of course, the second benefit is we don't have to use PDB. Um, this is, I don't know, what's the word? It's debugger independent, and we could set an environment variable to use different debuggers. I'll show you quickly a couple of the debuggers that we have out here. So the first is PUDB. Um, so I think this might be the original. And then there's this other one called WebPDB, and it has a couple extra features. So these are just projects that you can check out on your own. I'm not going to get into it here. I did find a good article on Journal Dev that will explain how you can change your debugger module. Basically, you want to use the Python breakpoint environment variable, and you can use that to set it to WebPDB or, or whatever you want. The other good thing about this article is, uh, where is it? It talks about how to stop debugging. So uh, we have the Python breakpoint, which can be set to either 0 or 1, um, basically a truthy falsy variable, where you can unset the debugger so that it's not going to be called in your code. Lastly, I wanted to show you the pep that helped introduce the breakpoint function. So this is pep 553. And it was introduced in 2017, uh, made it into 3.7 of Python, as we know. And it kind of talks more about the rationale for why we need this function. So we've talked a little bit about the issues with uh, the old way of doing things, where you have to import a module and then call a method on it. And this just highlights some of that, that it's a lot to type. Um, there can be typos. Um, it's coupling the debugger too closely to the code. Um, linters don't like that it's a one-liner, right? So there's a couple things here. Further down in the article, it does talk about the environment variables, how we can disable debugging, and how we can import alternative debuggers. So I'll link this up in the video notes so you have access to this article as well. All right, I think that's pretty much it. Last thing I'll do is actually I'll show you that you can use the letter C 
to continue that function and basically exit the debugger. So we can run this again, we can write C, or actually the whole word continue, and that'll continue uh, the running of that function. So just a little tip there. Other than that, thanks for watching.